Welcome to the Aston Martin DB11, the latest in a long line of cars to bear the DB name. Now, after over a decade, the DB9 is gone. DB10 was just for a chap called Bond, so that leaves us with number 11. And what a thing it is. First, the engine, a 5.2-litre twin-turbo V12 designed by Aston's in-house team and built by its own guys. That offers 600 brake horsepower and 516 pound-foot. Aston says it'll hit 62 from rest in 3.9 seconds and top out at 200 miles an hour. So it's fast and thanks to its turbos, start-stop tech and cylinder shut-off, it'll be eco-conscious too. Not too bad for a 5.2 litre V12, is it? Now some of you might be worried about the noise. Will it be all muted like a turbocharged 911 and what have you? Well, signs are pointing to no, but more on that later. However, on the subject of noise, Aston is aware that some of its owners don't really like big, intrusive, loud, angry things, which does make me wonder why they're buying V12s. But with each of the driving modes comes a different level of noise put into the cockpit, so quiet, loud, and loudest. And you can do a silent startup, which will certainly please some people's neighbours. Aston's also keen to point out that this isn't an MP3, no fancy electronic trickery going on here. It's all noise from the car. Now, before we go any further, this is what the DB11 has to replace, the iconic DB9. Yes, the DB7 preceded it. No, there wasn't a DB8, but the DB9 was something else. It was the kind of car that just oozed cool. It had a six litre V12 engine and made a hell of a racket while it was going about its business. But at the same time, it was quiet, it was smooth, it was refined. Its design was clean and it still works today. There are a few bits in the interior that are dated, but the exterior, especially the early cars, I think, just looks right. One of those designs that's set in stone. So what the DB11 has to do is it has to take all of those bits, timeless design, beautiful engine, lots of power, lots of go, lots of curbside appeal, and keep that going. So then, DB11, let's see what you got. What it's got is a new face. It's the first car to embrace Aston's second century design language, and it's quite a thing. The standard Aston grille is where the whole thing starts. From there, there's a new single-piece clamshell bonnet there to do away with nasty shut lines, and that leads to some awesome details. The curlicues vent pressure from the wheel arches and are a cool take on the trad Aston side strakes, and how's about that roof rail? Only one place in the world can make them to Aston spec. One of the coolest things about the design, though, is something called the aero blade. There's two holes in the back of the C-pillar that force air under the bodywork and out the back to act as a virtual spoiler. So there's no actual spoiler there. It can have a smooth bum. Now, there is one for high speed runs so the car doesn't fall off the road at 200 miles an hour, but that's probably a good thing. The interior features, according to Aston, some of the most imaginative use of leather you'll find in any car. The infotainment has been given a much needed working over as well. A 12 inch screen sorts the car's main functions while a smaller 8 inch unit does the rest. Thanks to the use of aluminium, bonding, clever packaging and, well, general cleverness, there's loads of space inside DB11 as well, which will please fans of golf. You can now fit two sets of clubs in the boot. For the rest of us though, well, there's a mechanical LSD, a new suspension setup, torque vectoring and all manner of trickery, including three driving modes, GT for being quiet, Sport for showing off round town and Sport Plus for the track. All in all, the DB11 is shaping up to be one hell of a car and we'll let you know how it drives later this year. Oh yeah, and you know I told you about the noise? Well, they let us start it up. <laughs> 